Hi, I'd like to show you how to have a Scala program produce HTML for displaying in a web browser in preparation for learning how to make a web application in Scala. Um, so what I'm going to do is make something that I'm calling a HTML emitter. And it extends app. And by extending app, we can make the program runnable um, without having to do some additional work. Now, um, let me just demonstrate that this program runs by doing this. And you see that hi appeared down here. We want the program to generate the HTML and store it in a file. So I need to, I need to make a way to do that. And I'm going to make something called a print writer. Val p equals new print writer. And print writer comes from java.io package. So I've made an import for that. And the print writer needs to know something. And in this case, I'm going to tell the print writer to write to a file and file also comes from java.io. And now I give the name of the file, which I'm going to put um, here. And you'll see later why I'm calling it robots.html. Uh, now, where I had print before, I can say p.print, and that'll write to that file. And then when I'm done, I can do p.close. Let's change it so that it's actually uh, HTML, like a web page. So here's HTML. So let's um, run this program. And it should compile and run and save to that file. And then load the file. And you'll see that it's empty. But if I view the page source, there's an HTML starting and closing tag inside. All right, let's add a little bit more. Let's have a body. And we'll have um, an H1 for a heading. And we'll say robot information here. And then I'm going to have a table. And the table is going to have a heading. And in the heading, it's going to have a row. And in the row, it'll have uh, two headings one of which says name, and the other of which says strength. So these robots have two properties, a name and a strength. Then in the table body, we will produce the rows. So one row might look like this. Uh, TD, indent that. Um, and then let's say the name of the robot is Robbie. Just bring these back up on the same line. And then I'll duplicate that, and we'll change this to 100. Uh, so if I've done this right, I've produced a file containing HTML that has an HTML table in it. Let's run. And then um, I'm going to reload the browser page here. And there we go. Here we have our table, and we have one row in the table. All right, um, let's see. I want to show you a couple other things, but it involves learning some new um, concepts. So one thing I want to do is show you how you can make random numbers if you didn't know already. I'm going to import Scala util.random, and then I'm going to create a new random number generator here. And then um, I can easily get new random integers just by saying r dot next in and then some number here and um, if you look over on the right you should see an example of one of those numbers that we that we get um, this number here is one higher than the highest number you want so if i want numbers between uh, zero and a hundred i need to say a hundred and one here so now you see um, the Integrated development environment reevaluated this and um, produced a 16 that time. All right. Um, you also need to know about case classes if you don't already. So here's how you make a case class. Um, and we're using a case class because we want to have a simple way of creating some information about a robot. Um, a name, which is a string, 
and a strength, which is an integer. So I've created the case class, and now I can make robots if I want to. So I could say val Robbie equals new, or not even new, just robot, Robbie with a strength of 100. And you see now that um, this has produced a value, Robbie, which is a robot, and it looks like this. Okay, uh, what else do you need to know for what we're going to do? You need to know that um, 1 to 10 produces a range of numbers in 1 to 10, and you can also do things with the numbers 1 to 10. So you could say, uh, let me duplicate this line, um, 1 to 10, and then map, and then say n, and then you can do something with n. So if I say n times 2, we should see a range of numbers, these same 10 numbers, but doubled. See what we did? We took these 1 to 10 numbers, and with this expression here, we doubled each one. All right, well, how about if instead of doubling those numbers, we just make robots out of those numbers? How about if we do this? I mean, what if we just, what if we just did this? Here, let's see what we get. We get, I'm scrolling to the right here, 10 Robbies with the strength of 100. Well, that's nice, but they shouldn't all be named Robbie. Maybe they should be, let's just have them be called Robot 1, 2, 3, and so on. So how can we get the number uh, 1, 2, 3 through 10? Well, there's a nice feature of Scala called string, interpol string interpolation. Let me show you how that works. If I have a value n here uh, with a value of 5, and then if I say uh, s and then some quoted string, just to show you what that looks like. So the quoted string should read ABC, but since I started it with an S, I can do special things. So I could say in here, robot $n, and then look what happens. It says robot 5. So um, a substitution takes place. $n means, doesn't mean put a dollar sign followed by an N here. It means go look for something called N and put that here instead of what I have. Okay, so now that you know how to do that, can you figure out how to, how to name these robots? Robot 1, 2, 3, 4, up to 10? Well, the first step is this. Put the S in front of the string so that we can do that string interpolation. And that wasn't quite enough because it didn't really appear to change anything. But what goes here? And look on line 11. dollar n. And now, robot 1, robot 2, robot 3, and so on. Okay? Um, now I want to have the strengths of the robots be random as well. What can I do instead of this 100 here? And you already know the answer, and for a hint, look on line 3. How about this? R dot next int. 101. And now we have 10 robots whose names are sequenced, robot 1 through robot 10, and their strengths are random integers equally distributed between 0 up to and not including 101. So between 0 and 100. All right, so those are the fun things to learn in order to finish this project of emitting some random robots to an HTML table. So let's go back to the HTML emitter program. And maybe there's some code we can copy. I think we can, we can use this import. So let's just copy that over. And then this I'm going to put down here. And um, OK, another thing you need to know is how to combine XML with Scala. So let's do that next. So here we have, um, we have an XML tag. Uh, let's just let's just do HTML here, and then end the HTML, and then um, inside the HTML we want to have a little, we want to 
we want to show the value of n. Let's do that. Okay, now I don't know what's going to come out over here if this is even going to work, but maybe I need to do something like uh, val x gets and then this stuff. And we'll see what we get. And there we go. We get HTML and then a 5 in here. Now why is it 5? Because n is equal to 5. If I change n to a 6, then... N is now a 6, and so a 6 comes out here. When you have um, XML in Scala and you want to do something more advanced, like have some Scala code, that we use these braces. Okay, I think you know now everything we need to do to, you need to know to finish this project. So let's come back here and see what we need to do. Um, here, we need to uh, produce one of these table rows for every robot. So we're going to use, we're going to introduce some Scala code here. And then we're going to um, map over the robots. So robots map, and then R will represent each robot in turn. Oh, we haven't made the robots yet, have we? Okay, let's go get that code from here. Okay, so robots now is a sequence of robots. It's got 10 robots in it. And now I can continue with mapping over the robots. So for each of these 10 robots, I'm going to do something. I'm going to produce some HTML. And so I need an opening brace and a closing brace. And now inside here, I'm going to make a table row. And the table row is going to have two columns, these TDs here. And then I'm going to say... Uh, R is the robot, so R.name, that's the first thing. And then the second thing is R.what? Well, look on line 7. Strength. Okay. Um, and I can get rid of this. And let's see if I have everything. Let's um, run it. And reload over here. Beautiful. We have written a Scala program to produce HTML uh, and write it to the file system. And then we can display it in the browser. All right, quick review. Here's some imports for things we're using. The print writer, the file, random. Here's HTML emitter, which is an object that extends app. We extend app because app gives us features that make the program easier to, uh, to, to make runnable. And we create this random number generator that we can use to generate random integers. We create the print writer and we tell it to write the contents to this file in the file system. Now we have the case class for the robot. And a case class is kind of an organizing tool here. It's a way where we can... Um, collect and organize two properties of a robot, the name and the strength. And here we take the numbers 1 to 10 and we change them into robot objects with names robot1 through robot10 and with strengths, which are random integers between 0 and 100. Then we have a big print statement here and we print out HTML and everything in here is just standard HTML, except for this part where we, where we call some Scala code to produce multiple rows.